In this video, we're going to check out Nemesor Zandrek and Vargard Oberon. Was it Oberin? Oberon. Sci-Fi War Gamers. Greetings, hobby fans. My name's Marcel, and it's my mission to help you explore the hobby. So in this, blah, blah, blah. so in this video, we're checking out the lore of that Necron character and his best mate, Nemesor Zandrek and Vargard Oberon. Now, is Vargard a rank, or is Vargard part of his name? Who knows? We'll find out in a second. Let's dive in. Nemesor Zandrek and Vargard Oberon. Nemesor Zandrek was once counted amongst the greatest generals in the dynasties. By his campaigns of conquest, did the world of Gidrim rise from ruling a small and insignificant planet on the fringes of the galaxy to the iron-handed governance of a dozen star systems. Even now, though Gidrim has been subsumed into the Sautek dynasty, Zandrek is numbered amongst the mightiest of heroes. It is a reputation well deserved, for Gidrim is one of the more expansionist of the recently awoken crown worlds and Zandrek's armies are an ever-present peril upon the galaxy's eastern fringe. Yet, for all his military genius, Zandrek does not see reality as it truly is. His mind suffered damage during the Great Sleep, and as a consequence, he is trapped deep in the past, in the wars of succession that racked his corner of the dynasties. In his mind, he fights these campaigns still as a creature of flesh and blood, crushing rebellious kings and bringing their domains back into the fold. He does not see armies of orcs, Eldar or men, but hosts of rebellious kinsmen battling to sunder his beloved dynasties. As such, Zandrek is one of the few Necron overlords to employ the full protocols of honourable war against all encroachers. Where others see aliens, he only sees Necron tier. He disdains the use of death marks, assassin wraiths, and other strategies forbidden by the codes of battle. Not that his subordinates have any such compunction. Wherever possible, Zandrek ensures that enemy commanders are captured, not killed, and thereafter treated as honoured prisoners, much to the outraged consternation of Zandrek's royal court. Indeed, there are many lords in Zandrek's royal court who would dearly love to see the old general removed from power, for they judge that his adrift perceptions greatly outweigh his feats of battle. However, as befits his station, Zandrek has formidable defences against regicide. His personal sepulture is heavily woven with traps. His personal household retinue boasts three entire legions of Lichgard, and he even employs fourscore food tasters, even though it has been countless millennia since any morsel passed his lips. Yet, Zandrek has one defence greater than all others, his aide and protector, Vargard Oberon. Oberon served as Zandrek's Vargard in their very first campaign, an undignified but hugely successful series of skirmishes in the swamps of Yama, and has stood steadfast at his side ever since, both on the field of battle and off it. Unlike his master, Oberon is very much aware of the changes wrought upon their existence, but has long since abandoned any attempt to awaken Zandrek to reality. Whatever the fault in his master's mind, the damage lies too deep. So, like any dedicated servant, Oberon attends to all the loose ends created by Zandrek's eccentricities, chief of which are seeing to it that honoured prisoners of war are killed whilst trying to escape, and that upstart lords of the royal court are either silenced or disposed of. Oberon's instincts for Gidrim's politics are every bit as finely tuned as Zandrek's are for battle. It is quite impossible for any plot to mature without word of it reaching Oberon, at which point he takes action to ensure it dies. 
The exact method depends greatly on what Oberon considers to have the greatest impact. A public trial by combat for the chief plotter is invariably Oberon's favoured method. His skill with a blade, legendary long before biotransference, has decayed little with the passing of millennia. Sometimes, however, Oberon deems the quiet terror of a conspirator's disappearance to have a more enduring effect. Regardless of method, Oberon has proven his supremacy hundreds of times over. Yet, every few decades, another upstart noble foolishly chances his arm against the overlord of Gidrim, who, for his part, is content to leave the Vargard to his work. On many other worlds, Necron or otherwise, Oberon would be considered the true power behind the throne. Yet his loyalty to Zandrek is total and completely without guile. He seeks no reward beyond continued service, and has never displayed an iota of desire to rule through his master. On campaign, Zandrek and Oberon have proven to be an almost undefeatable combination. Zandrek seldom lowers himself to personal combat, but instead wields as a weapon the battlefield acumen that somehow remains undimmed by his faltering memory. Under his gaze, the Necron armies of Gidrim react almost instantaneously to counter enemy strategies, shifting between aggressive and defensive postures at a moment's notice. With a few carefully chosen words of command, outflanking foes are isolated and crushed, enemy assault waves dispersed and fire support positions obliterated. Such is Zandrek's crystal perfect reading of the flow of battle that even the enemy's experienced veterans often seem like raw and fumbling recruits, as their every tactic is anticipated and their every skill countered. For his part, Oberon fights in the front lines, wielding his war scythe with a precision to be expected of a warrior who counts his campaigns by the thousand. Yet, no matter how distant he is, Oberon always keeps close watch on Zandrek. His responsibilities as bodyguard outweigh any other considerations. Should Zandrek be threatened, Oberon always returns to his master's side. It is well that Oberon is so dedicated, for few Lords of Gidrim are eager to fight alongside their Nemesaur. Some simply cannot tolerate Zandrek's constant stream of reminiscences to battles fought long ago. Relevant to the campaign at hand though, those recollections always are. For others, Zandrek's damaged mind is a constant reminder of the fate that might one day be theirs, should need dictate they enter stasis sleep once more. None of them see that such damage has doubtless already been wrought, that they are, in truth, just as blind to their own involuntary idiosyncrasies as Zandrek is to his own. So then, Nemesaur Zandrek and his best friend, Vargard Oberyn, will you be using them in your army? Have you ever used them in your army? Will they ever even make the miniature? Have they cut him from the new Necron rulebook? What sort of bird is outside making all that bloody noise? Let me know in the comment. Ow! Let me know in the comments below. My eye is itching now. Maybe it's the hat. If you enjoy the content on this channel, then please consider joining our Patreon, the link to which is in the description below. And if you do, I will love you forever. If you want to see some more heroes and villains, of the Necron and Warhammer 40,000 universe, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That means you, Michael. As always, thank you very much for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels.